listening to the Marketing Personalities Podcast, a podcast for growth-minded entrepreneurs that serves up valuable insight and interviews about aligning your marketing strategy with your personality type. Because here's the deal. You shouldn't have to feel fake and salesy in order to grow your business. And you no longer have to. Your marketing strategy can feel good to implement and it can work. You can attract the right clients and customers to your business and grow your profits all while staying true to who you naturally are. So in the name of honest business growth, bring your unique talents, perspectives, and personality to the table and join us on this week's podcast episode to discover marketing that feels good for you. Welcome back to another episode of the Marketing Personalities Podcast. I'm Britt Colo, and I'm here today with Vanessa Ryan, who is an all-around creative entrepreneur and an opt-in expert at VanessaRyan.co. Vanessa, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, I am so super pumped. (laughs) Super excited. So Vanessa and I are here today to discuss free opt-ins. You know those things on your website where people can download them in exchange for their email address? Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. That is what Vanessa is a true expert in. And we're going to spin this conversation so we get to talk about how we can create an opt-in that fits our own marketing personality type and also serves our ideal client's needs. So we're going to get into that. But before we do, you've got to get to know this woman. So Vanessa, first of all, just tell us, aside from being a business owner and you've got your hands in a bunch of different things, who are you in this world? What's going on over there? Okay. So uh, my name is Vanessa, obviously. Uh, (laughs) I've had an online business since 2014, which was when my little girl was born, who's now four and a half, almost five, which I can't believe. And getting pregnant um, before that, I was actually stuck in like a minimum wage telemarketing job. I was going to school, but wasn't really getting anywhere. And I just decided that when I had my little girl, that I didn't want to spend meaningless time making $10 an hour at a telemarketing job because I knew that I was going to miss so much time with her. So from 2014 and on, as hard as it was, I like learned everything I could about being an online business. I was blogging for money. Um, then I started doing brand... Well, first it was logo design because I didn't have a clue about branding. But I very quickly evolved into branding and WordPress design. Um, And now after years of working with clients and learning about marketing, I started working on opt-in strategy because it's really my happy place. I really love figuring out how to help people make more profit in their business, not by following like what everyone else does, but by doing what they truly love and like doing their own thing. So I mean, aside from that, like I always go back to business because I feel like it's so much of who I am. Like (laughs) even as a kid in middle school, like I was always an entrepreneur, um, like helping the lady down the street at the bed and breakfast and trim rose bushes and like all of those things. I've been like an entrepreneur my whole life. I mean, if I had to say something about me that's not business related is that I'm like totally obsessed with like the zombie apocalypse culture and (laughs) I like to play video games, (laughs) which no one really would guess about me. So there you have it. Sweet cupcake. Vanessa loves zombies and video (laughs) games. Oh my gosh. That is so funny. That just completely dropped my jaw. I'm like, wait, really? Because you are sweet cupcake Vanessa. And like pink and like love dust, and just confetti and and you've got the zombie side. That's okay. We've all got that zombie shadow side. That's so funny. Okay, so <laughs> so I love to hear kind of the progression over the last five years of just kind of starting out with like, all right, I've just got to figure this online business thing out. Finding really, it sounded like any kind of work that you could kind of do, blogging, whatnot, and then it sounds like you just basically taught yourself design and then web design and found that these people needing opt-ins, that was a a need. Is that really what took you over into the opt-in space? I mean, you said that it's a really happy place and I can definitely see that in the way that you do your business now. What really turned you on to, wait a second, opt-ins, I can help people with that. 
Yeah. So um, I was pretty much like doing everything and what everyone likes to call like the Jill of all trades, right? So I was offering my clients like brand design and WordPress web design and like literally just doing anything that I could. And then it got to a point where I would design those sites for people and they would be like, okay, so like now what's next? Like, I don't like know what to do now. Like now my website's launched, but I have no idea about blogging. I have no idea about like how to sell my products. And so funny thing is, is that when I first learned about opt-ins, it was, it was years ago. It was probably like 2015. And my first opt-in was like how to save up to get um, like a logo design or something like that. And I think like probably no one downloaded it, but I had no clue what I was doing when it came to opt-ins. Like I was writing like two to 3000 word blog posts about all of these things. I was, wasn't getting any traffic. Getting clients was like super, like it wasn't even feast or famine. It was more like barely getting by in famine. So I was like working like 80 hours a week. Like I was exhausted. I wasn't really getting anywhere. I definitely wasn't like making enough money to do anything. And I got so burned out that I actually stopped blogging and showing up online for an entire year. And I made money just by like the clients that I had, like from monthly work, like retainer work that I'd had with them. And through that year and cutting out all of the other noise, like I took a break of social media and everything, but just working with those clients, I realized that what I was helping them do was create opt-ins, like create an email welcome sequence, like send out newsletters, figure out how to get more eyes on their products, like helping them with marketing strategies. And I just kept having like all of these ideas. And that was like the work that I really love to do. And so then quickly I realized that doing things like, like, I think at some point I was even like an Instagram manager. Um, You know what I mean? And I was like just doing so much. And then I was just like, you know what? Like I'm really tired and I got invited to be a part of some um, kind of bundle or toolkit at the end of 2017, around October. And so I was like, all right, I need to get my site. I need to get my stuff together. I need to get back out there. And I just kind of was like, well, let me see what it's like. I I know that my clients have trouble designing opt-ins and digital products. So let me like repurpose some of these things that I have and turn them into templates. And hey, like, wait a second, like there are no good Canva templates for things like this. So what are people supposed to do, you know, if they can only use Canva and can't use Adobe? So then I like went through a very clumsy process of creating my first digital product, which was the opt-in toolbox. And literally by the end of 2017, um, I relaunched and rebranded my new business. I had an opt-in where I was giving away, you know, free opt-in templates. And I launched this Canva toolbox and actually made almost $5,000, which the summer before, like I had literally been struggling to even pay my bills. And so when I like had that launch and made $5,000 $5,000 off of like my very first product and it was all due to opt-ins. I was like, holy moly. Like I really just like found like what I want to do and what I love. So that's kind of like the super long story of like all of this struggle that I went through that really helped me like find what I wanted to do. So yeah. And it sounds like that willingness to be all things and get your hands in all things while it was hard, it did allow you to find opt-ins and it did allow you to find design and not just strategizing around opt-ins, but finding the actual need. And I think, I think you hit it. I see, especially bloggers and creative entrepreneurs who obviously you work with a lot they might have an idea of what they want to provide to their ideal client. They might have an idea of what their ideal client needs from them, but they get stuck on what to put in the opt-in and then how to design it. So it's actually something that people not only download, but actually use. And that's where you come in. And so that willingness to experiment and explore all those different things made you the expert that you are. And now you're just flying. Like you're just, you're just doing it. So I'm curious, we're not going to talk a whole lot about your personality type today because we're going to talk about everybody else's types, but just give us a, give us an idea. What is your type? 
So it's actually funny because depending on like what day it is or what context I'm taking like the personality test in, I'm like a cross between an ENFP and an INFP. I think in my own personal life, I'm super introverted. Um, Like I'm the type that I really won't talk to people a lot unless they talk to me first. Like I'm better like by myself and in small intimate gatherings than I am in like huge crowds. But as a business owner, I'm super extroverted. Like I love getting on live video. I love doing live trainings. And I don't know, I'm just like so outgoing <laughs> Like as a business owner in the online space, which is pretty different from like how I am in real life. So it's a little bit weird. <laughs> well, I mean, I see that. And we, we went just last week's episode. If you haven't listened to it yet, listeners, you've got to cue in. I break down what all of the aspects of the personality types are, all five of those letters that you get when you get your assessment results. And I do camp out on the introvert versus extrovert for a little while. And I, and I still want to record a full-on episode just about that. But I mean, I've heard this before where in real life, I feel more introverted online because there are there's a screen between you and the actual external stimuli and the people, it's not necessarily as hard to be around people in that context. So yes, I I totally hear you. Totally see that. Okay. So let's dive into these opt-ins. I'd love for you to lay some groundwork for us. What is an opt-in and why do we need one? Just to like start ground level, what's going on here? Yeah, perfect. So I think you explained it um, pretty beautifully when we first started. Uh, But essentially, what an opt in is, is it's something of value that you're offering someone who comes to your website or wherever you're doing your business at. And they're basically paying you for a resource in exchange for their email address. So I say they're paying you with an email address because there's so many opt ins and free things online now that. I consider like the email as a payment for, you know, getting that free thing and also getting on your email list for any other extra content and value that you're going to be providing for that person. And it still takes like a trust factor, right? So even though what you're offering is free, um, people have to feel good about giving you their personal email address. I mean, it's, it's a personal thing for people like to get in their inbox. And so when they're paying you with that, like it's kind of like also like a permission of like, okay, now I'm going to show you what other awesome things I can do. So your opt-in should really be something that is super valuable to like your potential clients and customers. And I always like to tell people that it should help turn strangers into fast friends, future clients and customers. And there is this huge misconception that like you don't need an opt-in for your business. And I've seen like ads and Facebook things saying, Oh, you don't need an opt-in to grow an email list or an email list of 10,000 to do this or that. So what I like to tell people is like to do what works best for you. I feel like it's almost impossible in our online landscape to not have some sort of value that you're giving away to people for free in exchange for that email address. Like, it's impossible to be able to build a business without building trust first. And I think that that's what that opt-in can do. Um, People can learn to trust you. They can have like a really small win, a celebratory moment by using your content, like whatever niche you're in, if you're selling products, if you're writing a book, if you're selling digital products, like physical products, working with clients, the opt-in is really like the first part of that friendship and building a relationship to turn people into like customers and clients because like that's the end goal, right? We're in business for a reason. We need to make money. Um, So it's kind of like a win-win. Like you give someone something for free, they learn to trust you and then they become your cheerleaders and love to support you when you launch new things, have new services, et cetera. (laughs) Yeah. That's like marketing 101, right? It's like know, like, and trust. And in every situation where that person has an opportunity to engage with you, little micro steps of knowing, liking, and trusting you happen. And that opt-in, I think you said the word value at least five times. And I'm so glad because that's the point. Because in every little micro engagement they have with you, when they see you on Instagram, they go over to your website, every single piece they have to 
Well, obviously they know you because they're on your thing, on your, wherever you are online. They have to like you. They have to, what they're seeing, what they're kind of skimming through. They've got to kind of like, okay, like I like this. I can relate. Okay. And then they've got to trust you. And trust really can only happen on a two-way street, right? It's value exchanged for value. And in this situation, money isn't being exchanged yet, but the email address is for this value that you are offering them. And honestly, like getting an email address is not always easy because we're all inundated with stuff. So I love how you framed that up and it how it just really underlining that word value. So important. Okay, so let's talk about the specific recommendations for the each tribe of the personalities. I'm not gonna go into all 16 personality types. That would take literally forever. Maybe not literally, but it would take forever. <laughs> And we're just not going to go that granular, but we're going to hit on the four tribes. And then I'll kind of give my overview of what I see working for each of the tribes. And then Vanessa, I'm going to pass it over to you and, and just see what else you have to add and any ideas you have for us on each of, yeah, each sure. of those tribes. Okay. So we're going to start with the analyst tribe. Analyst tribe it includes INTJ, INTP, ENTJ, and ENTP. These are our intuitive thinkers. And what we know about these people, they're great at strategy. They're great at seeing the big picture and dividing it down into bite-sized pieces and a step-by-step process. And so what I see analysts doing really well in their own individual ways is telling us a step-by-step process that they've already figured out for us. They're also super analytical. So the tech stuff doesn't usually throw them for a loop while it does other personality types. The real technical backend integrations of creating a technical opt-in, that doesn't really scare them too much, right? So with that in mind, Vanessa, what kind of opportunities do you see for analysts coming up for an opt-in? Yeah. So the fun thing about this is that people can really get creative with the type of opt-ins that they are making. So even with like the analyst tribe, even though they are like super in tune to techie type stuff, from what you're saying is they have the ability to break it down step by step in a way that it makes sense for non-techie person or people. (laughs) So what I can see being great opt-ins for people who are analysts would be things like workflows. Like I can envision that there are probably a lot of like OBMs or online business managers or tech virtual assistants who are actually in the analyst tribe. And so what they would be really great at as far as an opt-in goes is creating workflows, right? So for example, I think I know someone that I've worked with who's an analyst. She's an OBM and she created a step-by-step workflow and course to take people through bite-sized pieces in a matter of a couple of days it helps them get set up in a project management system. So she basically took that, took one small project and broke it down into like tons of, well, not tons, but lots of little steps. So it's like, okay, here's step one, take this tiny step, get this accomplished, and then we're going to move on to step two. So for analysts, I could see things like workflows being really great. Um, And that could be workflows, not just for like project management systems for Asana or Trello, uh, but even for web designers and like developers who might be analysts, people who do a lot of coding. Um, They could have step-by-step guides of like how to insert HTML and customize a certain part of your website. So I think any tech-related process that they have that they see people struggling with the most, um, I think that that could be turned into the perfect opt-in, which essentially could be like a really quick screen share of this is how you do this. And here's like a one page PDF that takes you like step by step through getting this done. And at the end, you're going to be set up for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. That makes sense. Yeah, totally. And even if you are an analyst and not necessarily in a technical field, you still think in a technical way. You think in a step-by-step process way that not everybody does. And, and you might not even realize you're doing it. It's just so natural to you. So think about the just where does your ideal client start and how can you just give them 
a one, two, three process just to get them started on the journey. It's not like you're going to show them exactly how to do your job, right? Like if you're a web designer, you're not going to show them exactly how to code an entire website, but you could show them the step-by-step process of how to get prepared for working with a web designer or something like that. In your example, were you talking about Andrea Lane of Creative Spring? Yes. Okay. Yes, I was. I was. I was. That's so funny. So... I had Andrea on the one of the very first marketing personality podcast episodes. I'll link it in the show notes, but I, uh, Andrea and I sit down and do a full on review of the analyst tribe. And so I'll link over to Andrea's site. And so you can see how she does her opt in. Another example of this is my friend Lainey Lamar at missgsd.com. I know she is also in the analyst tribe. And Lainey is an Airtable expert. Airtable is a super cool, just an incredible platform where you can manage your tasks, manage projects, manage data. And it's in spreadsheet form, but it's not Google Spreadsheets. It's all very intuitively integrated. So cool. If you're not familiar with Airtable, oh my gosh, just just wait. It's so cool. And what Lainey does is she offers a free base a project on Airtable is called a base. And she gives you a free base for a few different things. But one of her most popular ones is organizing your content strategy on Airtable. And she gives you the free base and the step-by-step of how to actually use that base. And it's just so intuitive. It's just so well thought out. I'll link to that as well in the show notes. So it's a couple good examples there. Now, Second tribe are the diplomats. Diplomats have to start with why, right? We we know this about these intuitive feelers. And so I see diplomats being really great at asking us questions, giving us inspiration, giving us lots to chew on. Vanessa, you're in the diplomat tribe. I'm in the diplomat tribe. We don't necessarily love to give like hard and fast step by step. This is the only way to do things recommendations. It's more like, hey, here are some options. Find the best way to do this for you. And so I see I see kind of a split. The INFJ and INFP, who are both in this tribe, they've got all the words usually. They've got lots of content in them. So an ebook might feel good for them. And then on the flip side, an ENFJ or an ENFP, they've got lots of words too. They often would like to verbally express them. So maybe an audio or video series or something like that. What other ideas do you have coming up, Vanessa, for the Diplomat Tribe? Yeah, so for diplomats, like I myself, you kind of like nailed it right on the head. I always like to give people like tons of different options. And instead of teaching just like one way to do things and like here, like this is how like I do it. This is how you should really think about it. And here are the questions like you need to kind of like make a decision on how like you can best implement this for yourself. So what I find like for people who are diplomats, and that's not even just me, like you said, if, if people like to write, like I've seen a good friend of mine has a really great like guide on Pinterest. And I believe she's in the diplomat tribe as well, but she's on like the J side as opposed to the P side like me. But she has like a step-by-step guide on getting started on Pinterest, which is like a written guide that also includes like videos, I believe. Like she has a YouTube channel. So she supplements like that love for writing and giving out content and those details with like, okay, now you can like watch this on YouTube or I'm going to go live on my Instagram. So I can see a lot for diplomats. Things that would work really well um, would be quizzes. Because if you are anything like me and I know Britt, like we like to make a lot of content to help our people. Uh, So a quiz would be a great way to guide your people to finding like their ideal solution. For example, like Britt, you have a quiz, like the marketing personalities quiz. And once someone completes your quiz, you give them like a whole breakdown of like the best type of marketing strategy that they can start with that feels really, really good for them. So it starts with a quiz and then it goes on to here's this written guide with all this extra advice. And then it goes on to the complete blueprint in which, you know what I mean? You give them like the exact steps that they need to kind of make their own plan. So I see things like quizzes is really good. 
I think eBooks, if you do it in the right way, I'm more of one um, for diplomats to do like some kind of guide that goes along with like maybe some kind of video, like a pre-recorded video. Um, this could be something like a workshop that you record, anything that it takes everything that you create. Like if you're trying to help a lot of different people and helps them have like a choose their own type journey. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and that's interesting. I hadn't really thought about that with the quizzes and I see why that is appealing to the diplomat because they know that no one solution is perfect for everyone. And so trying to help out that client who's trying to find the right solution for them, the quiz might help them do that. But I also see, and this is kind of conflicting, I also see a diplomat not loving the actual implementation of a quiz. Like they they could probably figure out the different... I know for sure, because I, ha- I have many examples popping into my mind. They can figure out how the dynamics work and what advice to give to each of the different types of people that are coming through their quiz. The technical integration, however, (laughs) like uh, choosing how everything is going to spit out the correct result for someone, that might get a little iffy. And so if you are in the diplomat tribe and you're like, yes, I've always wanted to do a quiz, I can kind of see how it could work, but you're a little scared to dig in there and actually create the quiz online, there are people in the world that are willing to do that. They're probably going to be an analyst, just so you know, (laughs) or at least a thinking type. Yeah. And no, I'll also say too with the quiz that um, me, it took me a really long time to actually put my quiz out into the world. Like I have a quiz that helps people find their perfect opt-in, but it was that like really cumbersome side of getting it all set up. That is what actually like prevented me or like made me procrastinate so long on it because I'm like, Oh my gosh, I have to do like, literally I have to write out all of the answers and then I have to write, you know, the tips and then I have to connect all of the dots. And then once they get their result, then I have to, you know, tell them more about this result. And then when you're timing that by like five or six quiz results, it's like, it's mind boggling. And for me, I like to do things in a way like I can knock out a ton of content in a really short period of time, like video workshop here, like here's this quick guide, here's all of these things. So anything that makes me like have to slow down and think about each single step, like most times, like when I get stuck in the sequence, like this text string of stuff, there's inevitably some kind of mistake. Like even with the quiz, it was like I had, I did it so quickly in the setup, but I had to go back through because it wasn't working the right way and like dissect all of the tech, like one by one. So I completely agree. I think that the passion for the content you're creating that diplomats have, and I think that will drive them forward in actually getting a quiz done. But the tech part of it is definitely, it's definitely can be a holdback. <laughs> <laughs> and again, there are people out there that are willing to do it and have the brain to do it. So that's okay. Great example. For one thing, Vanessa, you have a quiz, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, but Vanessa has a quiz that you can literally go and find your perfect opt-in to create. So that's perfect. That's full circle. That's at vanessaryan.co slash quiz. And of course that's linked in the show notes. Another example of a diplomat who has a quiz, actually two diplomats who have a quiz are the ladies over at Clarity on Fire, Kristen and Rachel, they have their passion profile quiz and they're both INFJs. So definitely seeing kind of a trend here. That doesn't necessarily mean that a quiz is perfect for you if you're a diplomat. It's just an option, right? Like Vanessa and I talked about this as we as we first got on the call. It's like, we're not necessarily... And wow, now that I say this out loud, I realize we are being two diplomats here. But... <laughs> We're not necessarily saying that if you're a diplomat, you definitely need to do a quiz. We are not here to paint you into a corner like that. We're just giving you ideas, trying to give you some spark of inspiration around how you might change your current opt-in to make it more powerful and more valuable or create a new one. Yeah. And then one, one more thing to add into the diplomats that kind of popped into my head was you know, diplomats tend to have a ton of content. And sometimes 
opt-ins are really great when they're just simply curated content. So maybe you wrote a whole blog post series, you know, a few months ago, and you just thought that they were blog posts, but really think about it. Like, could you curate those into a book? You probably could. You know, something I love, a point that I make, um, I think I have a lesson on this in one of my programs where I tell people like, sometimes people like to give just like a checklist or a worksheet as an opt-in and it drives me nuts. Just because if like you are reading a blog post and it's supposed to be super actionable and they're offering you like some sort of workbook or checklist or something that you can download and take action on it. But then like, what if you download that workbook and then you don't get to it for a week. When you open the workbook, if there's like no context inside of it, you're like, well, what the heck was I supposed to do with this anyway? So I always tell people that if they're going to do something like that, and that that what they should do is take their blog post, like a summary of their blog post, copy their whole blog post. And instead of just creating a workbook, creating it as a guide and like put that blog post inside of a PDF so people know like they can read it. It creates more value because people don't have to try and figure out where the blog post was or what they read and it helps them take more action on it. So I actually love that you make that point because if you have a lot of blog content, you can say, Hey, like you can read all four of these blog posts or instead, why not just get this complete guide? that also includes worksheets to help you like get through XYZ. So that's like a really value-filled opt-in because it helps save people time and having to like hunt around to try and figure out like all of these different steps like in a series that you created. Yeah, exactly. And I've I've heard people say, well, but that is already on my website. Like am I cheating if I then curate it into a book? No, you you are giving us so much time back. Nobody wants to click through and look through all of the four different or six different or 10 different blog posts in the series. It's so helpful to just have it all in one PDF. Please give that to us. Yes. Perfect. That is so actionable. Plus that was a really great tip, like pulling, actually just copy and paste the blog post in. Cause yeah, I mean, if we download it and a couple days later, we go back to it, we're like, wait, what? And then we don't actually use it. And the point here in offering an opt-in, I get it. We're all entrepreneurs here. At first, we think, okay, we need an opt-in because we need an email list and we need an email list to sell to them. But this still comes back to a value exchange. And if you are getting those email addresses and they're getting the download, but they're not using the download, you haven't actually made a value exchange. Exactly. Yep. It's not going to do the job that you want it to do. And it's obviously not doing the job that they wanted it to do. So you haven't actually built any kind of trust there. Yeah. And that is such a big pet peeve for me is that people are like, Oh, I'm going to make this opt-in and like grow my email list to 10,000 subscribers. And I'm going to launch this thing. And I'm like, but are you giving people value? Like sometimes people will like set up their opt-in and for one, it's like you said, they download it. And then it's like, completely forgettable. It collects like desktop dust. And then what if you're the type of person that lets your email list sit for a while before you email them? And once you pop up in their email again to try and sell them something, they're going to unsubscribe immediately because for one, they never used your opt-in because it was like forgettable. It's not giving them like that quick win at that super like high desire. Like I'm going to get this done and I'm going to get it done quickly. And then you ghost on them for weeks or months even sometimes. And then you try to sell them something. Then we're like, wait, like that's happened before. Like I've been like, who is this? Like, yeah, I don't even remember like who this person is. You know, so that's like a really big pet peeve of mine is that like people think that the number in the list is most important, but it's not true. Like the quality of your list, the engagement with your list, like how you nurture them and love on them, that is what's going to help you make sales and really grow that trust with people and grow like a tribe of people who may not necessarily buy from you every single time. But if you're launching something, even if they don't buy, they'll share it for you. You know what I mean? Like, so that's like, I hate when people are like, Oh, like if once you have a list of 10,000, like you've made it. And I'm like, no, that's just like, it's just not true. Like it's all about quality and loving on people and nurturing them and really like giving to them so that they want to like give back to you and support you. Yeah. And it starts with offering an opt-in they actually need. Right. And then getting them to actually use the opt-in. You know, it's like, it seems really small and it's so easy to skip over. 
And then so many people are like, are wondering, but why aren't they buying? Right. And it's in those micro engagements, right? You've got to get them to use it. Okay. All right. I think we both got that point across. Let's move on to the, (laughs) (laughs) the third tribe here, our sentinels. So we know that our sentinels are order driven and they're usually really great with organization. So creating templates, giving us templates, that can be really helpful coming from a sentinel because you've probably organized things better than we could do on our own. So please help us organize our stuff. (laughs) (laughs) And our ISFJs in the Sentinel group, our ISFJs and our ESFJs, you guys are really tuned in to being empathetic toward your audiences and creating support and a really great experience and, and this feeling of friendship. And so being that the case, I just want to kind of highlight ISFJs. You can be such amazing community hosts if you allow yourself to be. And this can look like a free community. It can look like a paid community. It can look like building a really strong referral network. There's lots of different options here, but I see that coming out for uh, Sentinels and that community can work as an opt-in. And then for ESFJs, ESFJs are usually found creating really great event and in-person experiences. And so if you're an ESFJ and you've been thinking about hosting a free workshop in person or online, make sure that your workshop attendees are at least giving you their contact info before they leave, right? So that's that's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, when it comes to the templates and the organization that these Sentinels bring to the table, what gets brought up for you, Vanessa? The first thing that I'm actually think, um, that I actually think about because it's top of mind, Corey Woodard, I think I'm pronouncing her name right. I'm terrible at name pronunciation, but um, she is the head now over at Coded Creative, which is WordPress theme. And it's so funny. I'm not sure what her personality type is actually, but when you s- described it, for me, she just had an Instagram story where she was like, Hey, like, should I start a business where I organize people's Google Drive folders? Like, I absolutely love organizing Google Drive folders. And it was so fun for me. Like, and I was like, seriously, like, do it. Like, if you're passionate about it, people need it. Like, I know my Google Drive is a complete disaster, but I'm like, do it because not everyone loves organizing and especially things like WordPress themes, like your documents have to to be on point. Like you have to have a good like step-by-step install guide. Your folders have to be all in the right place. Like people need to know that when they download the theme, exactly how they're going to like install it, use it, customize it, how to get in touch with you if you have like any type of, you know, questions or problems. So that that's immediately what pops into my mind are like people who create website templates. They have to be in that tribe. And then especially with like the organizing because selling any type of like huge digital product requires such organization so that people can actually use like what you're offering them. Like I know for me selling Canva templates, like my goodness, what a journey that is. Canva templates are super hard to sell uh, because you have to give people a link to get to the Canva template and they have to follow like step-by-step instructions to not change it before the next customer gets it. And it took me like an entire year to finally get a good process down to actually organize it in a way that made sense and like had less user error. So I know from experience, like selling templates, like you kind of have to be in this tribe because you need to have that brain for organizing. So even if it's not like WordPress templates, maybe it's Canva templates, maybe it's something if you're not in like, WordPress design or any type of design. Maybe you're a home organizer. Like, um, anyway, sorry. Now I was trying to think of someone else who just was saying that she actually started a brand new community uh, to help people find like their tribe. But she also said in an Instagram story that one of her favorite things is like organizing home spaces, like closets and cupboards and things like that. So that just kind of reminds me, like it doesn't just have to be a service for entrepreneurs. It could also be like a B to C, like a business to consumer type thing. Like you could offer home, like organization tips, like types of 
step by step how to declutter like your kitchen cabinet or how to like spring clean your house or like how to do like the Marie Kondo type things. I know that's like really up and popping right now. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. So hopefully it didn't like go off on too much of a tangent. <laughs> no, I think I think you're right on track. And I, I think to connect it back to anybody that might not be working with other entrepreneurs, if you're in a space, let's say you are a relationship coach and you are in this Sentinel tribe, think about, and this goes for anybody in the Sentinel tribe, think about what does your ideal client need to get in order in their life or their business, but in their life before they are ready to work with you and or buy your products? Because if they don't at least have that first bit of organization down, they're probably not going to buy from you, right? And it probably is something they're already craving. They might just not know that they need organization. They might know, like, let's say you are a fitness coach, right? And your ideal client wants a lean body or a flat stomach or something like that. That's what they know that they want. You know, as the person you are, they've got some stuff they need to organize before that's ever even a possibility. And so you can give them an opt-in that helps them organize X, Y, or Z, whatever you see them needing to organize before they even start working with you. And just make sure as you're doing that, you're messaging it, you're promoting it, you're selling it as this is going to help you get what they actually want. Because they probably don't want organization. They want a lean body, right? So there's that. But yeah, lots of options. I actually really love that you said that because that is one point that I always try to get across to people when I'm helping them create opt-ins is that you need to give people that very first step. Like I always call it like a step zero or a baby step, like before they buy your course, before they hire you, like before, you know, they purchase this digital product, like what do they need to do first in order to be ready like for that next step? So if someone is like getting ready, if you want someone to buy like your copywriting course, naturally, if someone doesn't know anything about copywriting, then they're going to have to put in like some groundwork to get ready, like to be in the mindset of taking this course. And like you said, it applies to anything like getting fit, eating healthy, like cleaning your house, like being a better parent or a better mom, like anything like that. Like what is the step zero? And like, what is that baby step that is going to get people ready to click a buy button that says, okay, you know what? I feel super pumped. I'm so empowered right now. I'm celebrating this win that I just got because I just accomplished this baby step. I'm ready to go and hire this person. I'm ready to go buy this course. I'm ready to get this digital product. So that's like really, really important in like prepping people to actually become your clients and customers. So I super love that you brought that point up. Yeah. Well, and and you said it like, how can we, how can we give them something of value that leads them to a really quick win? Because they need to feel like they can trust you and they can feel like they're already making progress because of you. The thing that we want to kind of click into their head, right? Is that yo, I didn't even pay for this and I'm already on the right path. Like, how did she do that? How did he do that? Like, that's the kind of reaction we need. Yes. Yeah, okay. All the brave fans, we're totally on the right track here. Okay, one more tribe we need to get to are explorers. Our explorers are action takers. They don't need all the strategy. They don't need the why. They don't need the organization. They just need to get something into play. And if they can just do that, they'll learn as they go and edit as they go. For all the other tribes, when they hear how the explorers operate, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. But this is just how explorers operate. So let's leverage it. It's so It can be so powerful when done right. And I think this is what I recommend to explorers. They can be some of the best people to offer try before you buy opportunities, like a free trial or a free consult, something like that. I don't love offering like free coaching. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I know I have a lot of coaches listening and they might hear that and they're an explorer and they think that they need to give away free coaching. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But you can give a free taste of what it actually is like to work with you or get what you provide. So if you have a product-based business, free samples, sending those out to you know people 
offering them on your website. And if you offer more service-based stuff, giving them a free trial, a free consult, a free behind the scenes look, something like that to just get them into what it's like to work with you. What comes up when I say that, Vanessa? Yeah. So um, it's so funny because I think every tribe that you say, I'm like, man, I feel like that's just a little piece of me. And I think maybe that just comes from like ha- serving like all of these different tribes. I've kind of like had to adapt myself to <laughs> like learn so much. But anyway, like what first comes to me is that I'm actually a part of um, a membership called Wandering Aimfully, which is Caroline and Jason Zook. And I feel like that they must be explorers in that sense because they've done a lot of pivoting on their membership. But what I love that they've just recently done is they have a membership and they were finding that like the conversion rates were not really high, even from like a live webinar or their email sequence. So what they actually did was they implemented a test drive of their membership where it's basically like you sign up for this test drive and they walk through every part of the membership. They're not giving you content that's inside the membership. What they're actually doing is walking you through like, Hey, this is how we can support you. This is what's inside. If you need this, this or this, this is what we have for you. So it basically really gives people like this sneak peek of what it's like to be a member. And so then at that point, people can decide like, Hey, this is where I need to be or no, this is like not the right fit. So I I love that you said that because I think that anyone who might have like a membership site, if they're selling an online course, if they're selling services to clients, um, giving them that first like little sneak peek, that little sample, that test fit, Like for a client, if they're, or for someone who serves clients, if they're a brand designer, maybe giving someone an opt in that's like, here, how you, here's how you discover your brand personality. Like, this is my exact brand discovery process. And this is like the first step of what it would be like to work with me. So, here, let me give you a DIY version of that. You can try it out. You know, let's have a discussion about, you know, what you came up with. And then that person is gonna be like, oh, wow, like, I never knew all this about my brand or I never knew that I wanted these goals or to make this big vision. Like now I want to hire this person to actually make this come to life. So there's many different ways that you can kind of work that for client based businesses, having like a sneak peek of that, again, back to that baby step, that step zero of what it's like to work with you, giving them the first part of your own very own process. They're like, Oh wow. Like she trusted me or he or she trusted me with this process and like, wow, this is fantastic. It would be amazing to work with this person. I can only imagine if this is DIY and they were to do the work for me, like how transformative it could be. So Mm -hmm. you don't have to think of like, okay, here's just like, give someone the first lesson of a course. You can do that, but there's lots of other ways to be able to do that. Yep. I love that. I'm now I'm really curious if Jason Zook is an explorer or maybe his wife is one of them probably is, if that's how that's been working. I'll be interested to hear. Yeah. And I mean, you know, as I hear you talk and as I look at my notes, as we've been going down through this, all of these ideas are to me inspiring. They all sound like they could work. And yes, the point of this episode was to open up your mind and and thinking about all the options that you have around opt-ins And then to bring it home and remind you the point here, and this is part of why I asked Vanessa to come on, the point here that she stands for and that I stand for as well is that at the end of the day, please create the opt-in that's going to feel good for you to create. I mean, there's no need to create something that you think your ideal client might need or that you see other people in your industry offering as their opt-in, if it just doesn't feel right to you, if it doesn't feel good to create for you, that energy, that like icky, not good energy is going to come out and product that you create. And it's not going to work as well as if you forget about what everybody else is doing, focused in on your type, how your type works and what opt-in is going to feel good for you and create that. Let's start there. So that's where we've got to land the plane. Vanessa, do you have anything else to add on as somebody walks away from this, this episode and they've got all the ideas, what can they do to really put this into play? Yeah. So um, the one thing that I do, um, I would love for people to take away from this is that it's okay to try a lot of different things and experiment um, with, Hey, I'm going to try this opt-in 
but maybe it's not working so well. So let me tweak it and try something different. Or, hey, like maybe I'm not really attracting the people that I want or I want to change my services. I just want people to realize that like just because you create one thing, you don't have to stick with it forever. You can pivot and change and really discover... Because sometimes like as we know for entrepreneurs, like I told you a little bit about my story before, like when I first started, I loved blogging and then I hated it. You know what I mean? I loved brand design and working with clients and then I didn't like it anymore. So it's all like a natural journey. So if you keep just trusting your instincts, just know that you don't have to like speak to every single person. Like you don't want to speak to everybody. You don't have to bring everybody into like your group or your tribe or your community or whatever you want to call it. You only need to find the people who like love you and want to support you. And so you can love and support them right back. So you don't need a hundred thousand people on your email list. If you can love and support even just a hundred people, um, if you have a small amount of the right people doing things that you love, creating content that you love, that the profit will follow and like your people will find you. And all that comes from like, creating an opt-in and creating content and doing work that you truly love and that truly makes you happy. So if I can tell anyone anything from this episode, please, like, it's not corny to do what you love. Like you can do what you love and be happy and make a profit from it. So yeah, that's what I would love people to take away. <laughs> totally. Because when you feel good, your audience feels good. End of story. Yes. Like, and, and an audience member that feels good about you is probably going to buy from you. Yep. I mean, more often than the person that doesn't feel good about you, right? <laughs> so, oh, so good. Okay. We talked about a bunch of examples, a bunch of ideas, and all of that stuff is linked up and listed in the show notes. Okay. So I know that we went through a lot of stuff and you might've had your pen and paper ready and you might've taken notes, but I'm going to venture to say you had you were even either driving or you were at the gym or you were doing something else. So if you want to grab this actual information, save it in an Evernote file or something, print it out, whatever. It's all linked in the show notes right here in your podcast app. So go ahead, grab that info. And then let's make sure... I mean, beyond that, let's make sure, Vanessa, they know where to go to find you online and take your opt-in quiz because I think that that's going to help them even more. Now that they have the groundwork laid, this quiz that you've created really is like, you like skip over all the questioning and you just basically tell us what kind of opt-in to create. So so go ahead. Um, where do we go to to take that quiz? Yeah, for sure. So if you just go to vanessaryan.co forward slash quiz, uh, you can find the quiz. It's really easy. It'll probably take you like less than three minutes to take. I mean, basically what I do is I ask you more about the type of content you want to create, you love to create, and then like your future goals, like what your big goal is, if you want to sell products, serve clients. And then all of that is wrapped up in a bow at the end when I tell you what I think the best opt-in for you to create is. And I also give you like why I think it's a good opt-in for you as well as like an expert tip from me. And if you sign up at the end of the quiz, you also get a one-page tool sheet. So you don't have to spend forever Googling how to do something. Like if you want to set up an evergreen webinar or set up a quiz, like we were talking about, all of that can be quite mind-boggling depending what tribe um, or marketing personality you have. So I give you a one-page tool sheet that tells you exactly the tools I use to set up these opt-ins. So you can grab that at vanessaryan.co forward slash quiz. And if you need help creating opt-ins and you want to make them pretty, you're not a designer, I do have a free set of Canva templates that you can also get at my website at vanessaryan.co forward slash free dash sample, which if you just find my homepage, it's all on my homepage. You can get all the goodness from there. So, And it's super pretty over there too. So <laughs> all of it's linked in the show notes. Go take that quiz. And you just gave me a really good idea. The tool sheet thing is really smart. And that needs to be a part of marketing personalities for each of the types. <laughs> um, because I'm constantly getting questions about that. But in like, not in direct ways. They're not necessarily asking for tools. But I can see how having a tool sheet for each of the types would be really helpful. 
Hey, I just said that on air. So that will happen. (laughs) But thanks for that inspiration. That really, that's really helpful. Okay. So you heard her. Go check her out. Go take that quiz. It's at vanessaryan.co slash quiz. And of course, to find a marketing strategy that feels good to you, visit marketingpersonalities.com. to this episode of the Marketing Personalities Podcast. Now it's time to connect your marketing strategy to your personality type. Go to marketingpersonalities.com slash MPP to download your marketing personality type full report. Use the code MPP at checkout to get $10 off. And that's a super special code for podcast listeners as a way to say thank you for being here. In your full report, you'll learn about your personality type, how it relates to the work you do, what your best marketing strategy includes so you can start implementing it right away, what your worst marketing strategy includes so you can avoid it, and so much more. Go to marketingpersonalities.com slash MPP to get your full report and use the code MPP at checkout to receive $10 off your purchase. And one more thing before you skip on to the next podcast, would you please share this episode with your entrepreneur friends who also need to feel good about their marketing strategies? Take a quick screenshot of your podcast app right now and share it out via text, Facebook, or my favorite, Instagram. Remember to tag me at Marketing Personalities in the photo so I can be sure to send you a huge high five and thank you for sharing the love. This podcast is edited and produced by the Podcast Engineers. They're pretty great, and you can find them at podcastengineers.com. That's all for now. Thanks as always for listening, and I'll catch you back here next week on the Marketing Personalities Podcast. Love ya. Bye.